What is going on guys? Dane here, aka Dr. Autoflower, and we are back with another question and answer videos on our flowers. So we got some questions here from you guys. We're gonna get into them. And before we get into that, make sure you smash the like button. It really helps the channel. Uh, the algorithm really is affected by it. So if I've ever helped you with any kind of information that has been useful for you, as some of you guys might know, I uh, don't make money on this. YouTube doesn't pay me. So if I've ever helped you, the best way to pay me back is just hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. Uh, that is super helpful for me and it really helps the algorithm and gets things back moving again. So if we can try to hit 500 likes on this video, I'd be super appreciative. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. It's free and you'll get access to all my videos. Uh, make sure you hit the bell too. It'll give you notifications when my videos go up. Also, if you guys wanna have your questions uh, featured in the next episode, make sure you put it down in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, guys, let's get into some autoflower and growing information and uh, get some of these questions answered. So I got a question here from Jordan says, is trellis net too much stress on an auto when it's in flower period? Uh, I would definitely say no, because this would be low stress training. You're not really like uh, doing any harm or anything to the branches or anything like that. You're not super cropping, which is pinching it and like bending it over. The most stress would probably be like just putting it into the trellis at first which doesn't seem to be much stress at all. So. so that's not something you need to worry about or worry about getting uh, hermaphrodites, uh, fallen sacks, or anything like that, or stressing it and causing any issues to the growth or anything like that. It should be completely fine and uh, definitely recommended. If, if you have a big bushy autoflower plant, definitely go for it, do some trellis netting. Sometimes those side branches can get really heavy and start leaning and stuff and that's when you get sometimes a branch falling right into the ground and into the dirt or something like that and, and there you go you kind of lost that branch so that's kind of a bad thing and you want to avoid that um, but with autoflowers I've also noticed they're not as flimsy with branches compared to photo periods uh, photo periods that get bigger faster seem to have more flimsy branches compared to autoflowers that kind of seem more uh, stout and stronger and not as acceptable to do that to fall over and, and uh, break or anything like that so um, that is one of the like I'll, I also don't give a stock strengthener really to autoflowers because they just don't seem like they need it because they're already kind of stocky and uh, strong stock so they're not really gonna have issue with that unless maybe you're growing some bigger sativa autoflowers that are like really branching up a bit but when you're doing in indoors, um, you don't normally run into that issue unless you're doing some big ma massive plants. Um, like let's say you're doing some deep water cultures and a big bucket and you're expecting to grow some one big, really big plant. Um, yeah, you probably want to get some trellis netting or something to tie it up. Um, and also kind of like it helps bush out the plant a little bit more. So it's kind of like uh, tying it down, but just in a different way. So definitely recommended. You definitely don't have to, but if it works for your situation, definitely do it. So I've got a question from Mike and he's wondering about watering autoflowers and if I do it daily or if I do it a few times a week. So this is all relative. Like there is no set schedule ever. I just wanna make this really abundantly clear to everyone that there is no set schedule. You shouldn't ever go on, oh, I'm gonna water every single day or I, I'm gonna, do this every three days. You shouldn't go by that. You should always go by what your plant is needing at that time. Because what it's gonna need at the beginning of the growth uh, or like its early stages is not gonna be the same of, of what it's gonna need during the end of flower when it's just like sucking up the water. So it's, it's all different and you have to, it is a thing where you, you kinda gotta do a few grows and watch the plant and and learn how they intake the water. And uh, the best way to do it is when you're first starting to put in the dirt um, and the dirt's somewhat dry, you, once your pot's full, you lift it up and you feel how heavy that is. That's the feeling of a dry pot. And you're gonna remember that because when next time your, your plants, probably just before it starts wilting, you could lift that plant up and it'll probably feel very similar to that. There shouldn't be much moisture in it if the plant's about to start like wilting a little bit. So that's your indicator. Like that is when it's dry and you need to water. There has to be water. When, once it starts wilting, 
you're a little bit too late and you're causing a bit of stress to it. So you want to avoid that, but it's also like a timing thing. Like you're gonna, there is no set time. You're just gonna have to check your plants maybe once a day, lift them up, maybe even twice a day you'll have to check them. Um, especially if, uh, you know, it, they're taking in a lot of water. So there's not really instructions I can give you guys that are like, okay, just follow this and then you'll always water perfectly. Uh, once you start learning to catch the plants before they wilt, it'll start just becoming a sixth sense to you and it'll make kind of more sense. But always lift it up. That's the best indicator. Just lift up your plant. Uh, if it's wet, if it feels heavy, you probably don't need to water. If it's uh, dry and it feels light, then it's time to water. So I got another question here about par and uh, what to give the autoflowers at what stage. So to break this down the easiest way, uh, 200 par in the beginning, that's a great point to start out for uh, seedlings. Uh, slowly work your way up to like 400 par during the end of the uh, veg cycle, I guess, once you start seeing pistils. Then from the flower stage, you're gonna wanna go from 400 par and slowly make your way up to, up to 750 near the end. So within like three weeks or so, you're gonna wanna go just ease it up from 400 par working your way up to like seven, 750. That's a good range for autoflowers. You're not giving too much. So the main key here is to slowly adjust from the beginning par levels of light to the more higher par levels of light. You don't wanna go drastic changes that can kind of stress the plants. So just ease into it little by little each day. Hopefully your light allows that with uh, dials and stuff, but if not, you can always raise your light up uh, that can decrease the par or lowering it down can raise the par um, or turn up the power, turn down the power. Yeah. Then we got a question from James asking when and how much rhino skin uh, nutrients do I use? That's an advanced nutrients uh, nutrients. And I do not use that on autoflowers. So normally I don't give rhino skin nutrients to autoflowers because like I already said earlier, their stalks don't really need that extra strength to them. Um, the auto flowers I grow indoors seem to always be stocky, stout, and I don't have issues with them falling over and stuff. Uh, that's more of a photo period um, issue that I find. So that is normally what I use rhino skin for, to keep the branches of photo periods uh, strong and not falling over. Because photo periods can kind of grow big and lanky sometimes and, uh, you know, not have strong stalks. So that's what you use that for. Auto flowers. If you wanted to, you can maybe give one uh, dose of rhino skin to it. Uh, maybe veg, I would do it, and late veg when it's about to flower. Um, that's about it, and I wouldn't do much more than just one time. Now, if you are growing autoflowers that are more lanky and more susceptible to falling over, then definitely use uh, rhino skin. And if you're asking how much, I would probably just give like a quarter of what it normally calls for. So I got a question from AR. He asks, uh, he's got two Vipar Spectra 600 watt LEDs. He's growing three autoflowers with them. And he's wondering uh, with these lights, will these uh, autoflowers grow colorful, frosty, uh, high potency buds? Um, so that's hard to say. There's a lot of factors in that. Uh, how you're growing, what soil you're using, all kinds of things. Uh, are they stunted? Uh, are they growing totally fine? No stunting at all? Um, there's a lot of factors you have to factor into that. Uh, but if you're just going to go by lights, um, let's say you have the cheaper models, like some Vipar or something like that, uh, comparing them to some really high powered lights or something like that, the high end ones on the market. Um, will it be as good? Probably not. Not as good as it could be. But will it be good? Uh, it said he's growing Mephisto genetics, so that already right there is half your battle. You started with good, high quality genetics, and uh, even if your light isn't the best, it's still probably going to produce a very decent result, uh, and you're probably going to be pretty happy with it. So, what I would recommend if you were growing with some cheaper lights, uh, definitely find out your par. So if you're growing cheaper lights, it's probably not going to produce as much useful par compared to uh, higher end lights. But as long as you get the par levels in the right range, your density and stuff should be pretty damn good. Um, not Probably not the best, but still pretty good. 
So that's what you want to do. Get a PAR app on your phone. I've, I've shown how to do it myself. You can go check those videos. Um, you can also buy a PAR meter if you want to invest in one. Highly recommend it. It's very useful and lasts you a long time. And you'll never be guessing again what your plants are getting for light. You'll, you'll know exactly. And that's very useful information. I have a question from Jonathan and he asks, do I suggest any super soil brands? Uh, yeah, and I actually have grown them with uh, autoflowers and I had pretty damn good results. Um, though the one thing I would recommend with growing with super soils, uh, sometimes you need to add like a topping, organic nutrient topping, maybe a month in or a month in the flower or something like that. You do want to make sure you're doing it on the right timing. Uh, you want to mark it on the calendar and not miss it. Um, also, you want to make sure your pH is good. Do not fluctuate with your pH. Make sure you're always testing and stuff and you should be having an awesome result with super soil. Uh, that being said, uh, the soil that I used was Stepwell Super Soil. Uh, they were actually really good quality. Uh, they came with some uh, powder nutrients as well. Uh, I, and I had some really, really good results. Grew some really big plants. Uh, I think that if you want to check back on my videos, I think that was 2020, 2021 when I was doing that. Um, and they came out pretty damn good. It was the last or those were the last organic autoflowers that I was growing. Um, if you check back my videos where I had a bunch in my big tents, uh, those are them because there's I think two. But yeah, Stepwell Super Soil did an awesome job. Uh, highly recommend those guys. And last question here from Christopher. He said uh, he knows that I grow with Promix and he's just wondering if I add anything to the soil before I plant in it. Personally, I don't mix anything anymore. Uh, I just leave it all up to the bottle nutrients. But if you wanted to, you could definitely put in some earthworm castings. Um, I'm not sure about guano. I haven't messed with that stuff with all the flowers. But like I always say, you can experiment. If you wanted to, you could add some like mycorrhizal or something like that. But the way I grow, it just doesn't really, it's not needed. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. Make sure you smash that like button. It super helps the channel. Uh, leave a comment and a question if you want to have your questions uh, featured in the next video. And until next time, guys, peace out. We'll catch you guys later.